Okay, so now that we have looked at the basics of transcription, so a single gene is copied from DNA into RNA, we now have sort of a, a generic type of RNA. Now, typically each gene is going to code for one of these specific types, but it isn't get in its final form. It isn't in a working form yet. It can't actually do anything. And that's one of the differences too between DNA and RNA. DNA doesn't really do anything. DNA is like a cookbook. A cookbook isn't going to gather your food. A cookbook isn't going to cook the food. The cookbook has the information on the preparation of that food. Uh, other workers have to gather food or prepare food. And that's, those, that's the RNA. That's what the RNA does. It actually does something in the cell. Uh, RNA will behave as an enzyme in many cases, carrying out reactions, binding to other molecules, making new bonds, and that, that sort of thing. So while it's going to contain information, just like the DNA, it can actually do more, a lot more so. And so what we're going to look at is now how it becomes one of these other types that actually has a more particular job. So the pre-RNA, the pre of a certain type RNA, has to be modified or processed. Uh, and so we're going to look at each of these in turn. The first one we're going to look at is what we call messenger RNA. So the messenger RNA is the one that most people just by default talk about when they talk about a gene codes for a protein, or gene codes for RNA, which codes for a protein. People say that sort of thing. And in that case, they're saying that a gene codes for messenger RNA, and the messenger RNA contains the same code as the gene. And within that code is the code for an amino acid sequence that will be assembled to then ultimately become a protein. And that's what messenger RNA does. It contains that information. However, it's not going to be readily usable immediately after transcription. There has to be some sort of processing or modification first. Okay, And then we'll get to the other types in, in, uh, later. So the messenger RNA, there are several key events that have to happen in the processing of messenger RNA. One is the removal of introns. The second is the addition of something called a five prime cap. And the third is the addition of what's called a poly A Poly A tail. Okay, so these these three things have to happen to the messenger RNA. So DNA is copied into RNA in the nucleus. This RNA now, let's say, is pre messenger RNA. So it's not quite messenger RNA yet. Uh, and what's going to have to happen here is that the messenger RNA. Let's just say this is a piece here. It's a single strand. And we have our, you know, U, A, C, C. This is just made up, you know, sequence. Like this. Let's just say that's it. So this is going to have uh, information within it. And the information we're going to get to a little bit later as we talk more about translation. We'll come back to the messenger RNA, talk about the codons and all a little bit more. We have to introduce some things and then come back to them. We can't, can't quite do everything at once. It won't really make sense. But essentially within this code are going to be groups of three nucleotides like this that are called codons. And each codon is a code later we'll look at the codon table, that it's going to code for a specific amino acid. And like I said, we'll, we'll look at that in more detail later. So this ACU codes for an amino acid, AUU codes for an amino acid, AGC codes for an amino acid, and so on. So these are all codes in RNA that will eventually be translated, say, into another language, the language of the amino acid sequence. That's what's going to happen ultimately. But within this are some regions, say, for example, uh, that don't code for any amino acids. They're non-coding. These non-coding regions are referred to as introns. Now, they, now when I say non-coding, people wonder, like, does this just not make sense? Is there no uh, code GAC and so on? That's not the case. Um, they potentially could. They're just nucleotides like all the other nucleotides. Okay? It's just a region of this that isn't red. 
So it's kind of like having a story with a bunch of information in it, and then an editor comes and removes chunks that they may deem unnecessary to the story. These are parts that you know, we, we can do without this. We don't need the description of the uh, coffee cup. Let's just take it out of there. He has a coffee cup. We don't care what it looks like. So there's pieces of information that get removed that at some point in time were deem deemed useless or unnecessary. Now, some people call introns junk, junk DNA, junk RNA, junk you know genetic information. That's not necessarily really true um, that it's junk. Uh, they're, in, they're segments of the genetic code that aren't used. Okay, uh, So when we say don't code, like I said, they, they could. And actually, we'll find later on, sometimes they actually do code for amino acids. But in general, they're at this point, say, in this particular gene, they're supposed to be removed from it in its final form. They're not supposed to code for any particular amino acids. Um, they may be holdovers uh, from evolution, right? So that th these are segments that were necessary for part of a protein in an ancestor, and now they are not necessary. So the protein doesn't carry out the same exact function that it did um, in another organism. So these pieces have to be cut out and removed. So that's the, the first part. Now the introns themselves uh, can, not necessarily that they will, they can make up they can be around you know, 80% of the pre-messenger RNA. So they could be a lot less too. They could be a, a small part of the messenger RNA, but they can make up a lot of this. So I'm just gonna give you one little example here. So what's gonna happen is a region is identified as an intron. So we say, okay, this, let's say this little segment here is this part that's the, the intron. There are unique molecules that are called small ribonucleoproteins. So essentially, they are proteins which have little bits of RNA with them. So that little bit of RNA can actually bind to part of this intron, recognizing it and saying, ah, yeah, that's one of the introns that I want to cut out. And then the protein is going to assist in the enzymatic action of breaking bonds and then reforming bonds. These small ribonucleoproteins uh, are going to attach to the beginning and the end of an intron. And what, then what they're going to do is fold. They're going to fold this piece of RNA so these two sections are together. So I'm going to kind of re redraw this with a little fold in it so you can kind of see. What happens is the intron gets folded into a little loop structure. Okay. So I'll just kind of get this here and then hang out like this. So the region that was the intron is now down here. Okay, This is the, the intron region. These small ribonucleoproteins, you know, they're attached here. And as, the, as several of these proteins bind together, they start to form this editing structure, the structure that's going to edit and cut a piece of RNA. And collectively, they make the structure referred to as a spliceosome. So a spliceosome is a structure made up of these small ribonucleoproteins that finds the beginning and end of an intron, folds the RNA, cuts the RNA, and then removes the section that was the intron. So the intron section has now been removed, let's say, and the piece of RNA is healed. You, know, you could say it's like the two coding parts go back together. The coding parts are called exons. So the coding region, so coding introns, non-coding. And there's a lot more detail that could be gone into with that. Uh, there's there's all, all different sorts of things that happen. How how do they bind to and find the specific parts um, that are the beginning and end of the intron? Uh, this GUAC rule and a whole bunch of other sorts of things. But what we need to know right now is just some basic terminology and an overview of the process and the fact that it just that it happens. Okay, that that the RNA is edited, pieces are cut out, a spliceosome does the work, um, and then it puts all the coding pieces the exons back together again. So that's the first part. Removal of introns, which could be one or it could be a lot of the RNA. Once that's done, we still have some modifications to occur 
uh, with messenger RNA before we're done. We have something called the addition of a five prime cap. So what's at the five prime end of a strand of DNA or RNA? Right. You should think that sticking off the five prime end is a phosphate, a phosphate functional group. Okay, right. And at the three prime end is an OH hydroxyl group. At the number three carbon, at the number five carbon. What happens here is at the five prime end, we get a backward GTP. So essentially, I'm not going to draw the whole the whole structure uh, in detail. So we'll just do a little abbreviated structure. So we'll say this is GTP, guanine triphosphate. One of the phosphates will be broken off for energy. And then a new bond will form. But this is a weird bond. It's not like the bond. So again, if you study the DNA replication process and look at the specifics of it and how the nucleotides are joined together, they're joined five prime to three prime. Well, five prime phosphate is attached to a three prime OH and then you get a new three prime end and it keeps kind of growing in the three prime direction. But there's a bond between a phosphate and an OH. Here what happens is there's a bond between two phosphates. So technically this is a five prime to five prime bond, which is why we refer to it as being backwards. Okay, really it should be the other way. Sticking off of this is an OH, so technically this is like a three prime end here. So that's peculiar because now it kind of seems like there's two three prime ends and there sort of is uh, in this particular case. This structure here would then be called the five prime cap. It's a backward GTP. There are a couple different functions of the five prime cap, but the major function of the five prime cap is that it is a binding site for something called the initiation complex. So when we get to translation, we're going to find that uh, other types of RNA, the ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA have to attach to the messenger RNA. So all the types will come together. So all the types will join in order to function in the translation process. They cannot bind to the messenger RNA without this cap. If you cut off the cap or remove it, the information here cannot be read. It requires this cap for that process to begin. Right? So that's really the major role. The cap allows something else to attach to this and then actually read it. If there is no cap, then that doesn't happen. So five, what is the five prime cap? Again, you could look at the details of the structure, but for us, all we really need to know the essentials of it is it's a backwards GTP attached to the five prime end. Now, the last thing is the addition of a poly A tail. And that's a, we could also add in here, it's a three prime poly A tail. So now at this end over here, what's gonna happen is the three prime end, additional nucleotides are going to be added now after the fact. They were not part of the DNA. They're not part of the gene. They're not something that's coded for. These are just extra ones that just get added on. And it's just adenine, 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 adenine nucleotides that just keep getting added on. So this is called poly many A's that get added to the three prime end. It's called tail because it can be fairly long, uh, a long tail that's attached. Now the length of this poly A tail will determine um, the lifespan, say, of this messenger RNA when it goes to the cytoplasm. It's protective. Once the messenger RNA goes into the cytoplasm, exonucleases are going to start to attach to this tail and chew it up. They're going to start to actually then cut off these adenines and they're going to move through. Once the tail gets too short, the cap will fall off and then this can't be read anymore. So essentially the length of the tail will determine how long this piece of messenger RNA can be read by ribosomes and how many copies of the protein that it codes for can actually be made. So if you don't need a lot of copies of the protein that this codes for, the tail may be short. The messenger RNA will leave the nucleus, go into the cytoplasm, be read a little bit, and then be destroyed. If you need many copies of this protein, then this may be a very long tail. Because once it goes out into the cytoplasm and it starts being read by the ribosome, 
the tail's getting chewed up, but it's not, it's still really long. So we read it again and we read it again and we'll read it again and we'll read it again and keep making copies of the protein that it codes for. Ultimately, when the tail gets too short, the process will end. So messenger RNA is the first type of RNA we're looking at. The messenger RNA, we said, contains the code for the amino acids. Those are called codons. Actually, we'll get more detail later. But some of the sections of nucleotides don't code for amino acids. They're called introns. The introns have to be cut out or removed. We call this editing. A spliceosome is the structure that removes the introns. It is made up of molecules that are part RNA and part protein joined together. They're called small ribonucleoproteins. They'll find the beginning and the end of an intron, fold the RNA, cut it, rejoin the pieces back together again, and those pieces that it's rejoining are called the exons. Now, a five prime cap is added, so it was a binding site, so the next process can begin. A poly A tail is added to protect it so that, again, it can be read for a longer period of time. And that would be it. So, messenger RNA, these are the modifications. Uh, and once this is done, then it will leave the nucleus through a nuclear pore complex, and then it can initiate the process of translation, um, which we'll not quite get into yet. The next, uh, next little short um, lecture is going to be on the transferrin ribosomal RNAs, and then we'll start into the, the translation process.